Assalamu alaikum, dear friends. I'm Professor Mukhtadar Khan. I teach at the University of Delaware. Today I want to talk to you about an interesting uh, discourse that is emerging on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, within a few days after the man who considered himself Caliph al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, was killed, there's a new call to establish a caliphate uh, by scholars in the United States as well as in the UK. Uh, what is prompting them is essentially the pathetic condition of governance in the Muslim world. There is no doubt, perhaps, that no place on earth is as badly governed as those countries, by and large, which uh, talk about, uh, which are considered as Muslim. However, we must recognize that there is a huge disparity within the Muslim world itself. Countries like Syria and Egypt, uh, most of the Arab world may not be governed well, but countries in East Asia are doing reasonably well. But anyway, these scholars are demanding that we establish an Islamic caliphate uh, primarily in pursuit of three things. So one is unity of Muslims, number two, security for the Muslim world, and number three, a form of development and progress that all countries aspire to. Unfortunately, their call for a caliphate uh, just after the last caliph was killed uh, is not grounded in an understanding of history. The Muslim world was never united. Immediately after the death of Prophet Muhammad, there were conflicts eventually leading to emergence of new sects and so on and so forth. Even during the period of the Khulfai Rashidin, we saw so many civil wars. So this assumption that the moment you establish a caliphate, there will be uh, peace in the Muslim world is essentially, or unity in the Muslim world is essentially a pipe dream. The idea that it will provide security and there will be no bloodshed in the Muslim world is also debunked by the same civil wars. Uh, so essentially, even during the existence uh, of the caliphate, there were bloodshed uh, within the Sahaba themselves and subsequently too. The idea that there will be unity among Muslims if we have a caliphate is also debunked by the fact that there was a period in the Muslim world when there were three not one, not two, but three caliphates. Uh, the Fatimids in Cairo, the Abbasids in Baghdad, and the Umayyads in Cordoba. So we had three sources of Muslim unities uh, existing simultaneously. And then this idea that there will be development and progress if we have a caliphate. Uh, Muslims will be so wonderful, united, and peaceful that it will lead to development is also debunked by our last experience of the caliphate. The Muslim world was colonized while there was a caliphate. The Muslim world began to decay and decline and became colonizable while the Ottoman Caliphate existed. So this idea that just resurrecting an institution, no matter how fragile, no matter how weak, no matter how loose, uh, as long as we can call it a caliphate, then all things will be wonderful. This magic wand called caliphate that we are looking for is not science. It is just an expression of how desperate the condition of the Muslim world has become, that we are just looking for whatever we can find. I think it's important for Muslims to start looking at their tradition strongly and recognize that perhaps the caliphate is not the model that they need to see. They need to look for an alternate model, that is the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is the Madinian model the last 10 years of Prophet Muhammad, where he governed in Medina. In my book, Islam in Good Governance, I talk about it on pages 200 onwards. And I argue that Prophet Muhammad left us a very beautiful sunnah. He showed us how to provide good governance based on Islamic values. And uh, his sunnah included a constitution, the constitution of Medina, Google it. Uh, a constitution which treated Muslims, non-Muslims, pagans, and Jews as equal citizens of the state, a constitution which was pluralistic, a constitution which treated all citizens equally, they had equal rights and equal duties. And what was important is that the constitution also served as a social contract, and therefore governance became by consent. The rulers, in this case Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was ruling by the consent of the rulers a consent which was driven by, uh, which was drawn from the same social contract. And finally, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, not only encouraged us to conduct shura, but also uh, continue to govern through consent and consultation. So I think if we just focus on these three basic principles, 
of constitutionalism of consultation and consent in terms of governance, in, in terms of establishing leadership, consent even in articulating policies, taking major decisions, a, a form of participatory democracy, you could argue, or a deliberative democracy uh, is perhaps what we are looking for in the future. Uh, Muslims should not think of implementing exact replicas of the past because the socio-political conditions that we live in today are not the same as those that existed in the past. But yes, we can live by principles which are enshrined in our tradition. Uh, and therefore, I recommend that uh, instead of talking about structures of government and, and saying we need a caliphate that may look like a European Union, may not look like a European Union, uh, what we really need to focus on is on good governance, whether it is established at the, at the minute level, in the mosque, uh, in your community, in your society, in your neighborhood, in your city, or at the macro level in, in your states. Uh, try to look at how we can achieve value-based good governance. And that is an important aspect. And I think we can draw spiritual inspiration moral inspiration and even religious justification from the Medinan model rather than the period of the qualifier of uh, any of the caliphs which were more bloody, more conquest oriented uh, rather than uh, governance oriented. And therefore I recommend that yes, engage in debates as much as you like, but try to focus on this one single important principle of good governance. And that is the future I think uh, that could, if focused on, uh, improve the quality of life, uh, peace, security, vibrancy, all of this could be achieved in the Muslim world. Uh, and uh, once again, shamelessly, let me recommend my book, Islam in Good Governance. Take a look at it. It's now available in paperback. This is Professor Muftadar Khan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.